What's up, beautiful people? It's your boy Drugba Jr. and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be checking out Africa is not poor because of colonization. All right, thank you guys so much. This is by Jordan Peterson, so I'm very curious to see exactly what he has to say about this. So if you like this type of content and you want to see more, smash the like button. It really helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm and my video being discovered. So with further ado, let's check this out. Well, you, you list here in one of your articles uh, where you make re reference to these rating systems, the bottom 10 countries for doing business in the world, Chad, Haiti, Central African Republic, Congo, Congo. Democratic Republic, South Sudan, Libya, Yemen, Venezuela, there's a lovely example, Eritrea and Somalia. And so there are three exceptions in yeah. the African ecosystem. Yeah. Mauritius, Rwanda, Kenya, South Africa, Botswana, and Zambia. You pointed out in your pros prospectus. Is it prospectus yeah, article? Yeah, prospectus article of uh, right, Art right. Institute. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Mauritius is a rising star, uh, and Rwanda is in some ways comparable to Georgia. So some of these countries have started to get this right. Yes. And so yeah. what's the consequence of that? And what does right mean? What they have understood, what these countries have understood, is that economic freedom is at the center for prosperity building. Uh, Rwanda, for example, Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda, is explicit about it. He said he wants to be the Lee Kuan Wu of, he wants to be the Singapore of Africa, and Lee Kuan Wu is his model. Now, okay. the dirty mouths are gonna start shouting, oh yeah, see, authoritarian, blah, 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 whatever. Me, I wanna talk only about the, okay. on the economic side. If you take Lee Kuan Wu and Singapore as your example, then it means that like him, you're gonna have to be serious about economic freedom. Okay. That's exactly what he did. That's what Singapore did. When Singapore- Yeah, that is true. Singapore actually is pretty good right now, economic wise. Uh, I've seen some of the um, area around Singapore and it's just like wealth ridiculous wealth is crazy and i wouldn't i would say if africa has to go into that kind of and state and we try to get to that economic stuff there's a lot of changes especially with politician like politics is like uh, is a key thing there's so much corruption in the african politician politics system is not even great it's not even funny there's bribal going on there's everything like everybody's just trying to eat right Everybody started to eat. They're not thinking about others. They're thinking about, like, in that instance, eating, like, for themselves, you know, them, their family, everything. So it quickly, they ship their family off, go to a different points and country, immediately get them better education outside of that country and quickly go about uh, how they distribute that money and create more wealth for their family, not for the country, for their family. So there's a lot of selfish reason into that. We figured that out. They went on to put in the right reforms to mm -hmm. make their environment the most, some of the most business-friendly environments in the world, one of the most free markets environment in the world, and you saw yep. the magic of Singapore. Yep. Today, Singapore is richer than its ex-colonizer, Great Britain. So that is true. People selling me today, oh. That is true. To really get math and science, you gotta do it. That's why learning. Africa is poor because of colonization. I'm like, please, let's move on from that. There we go. Not maybe a tiny percentage in where we are today. There we maybe, go. Maybe, maybe, and I don't know. But I know it's not the cause. Because yes. many countless countries have been colonized before. And by the way, colonizing one another is, is humanity's history. It just happened that- That is true. African, African that is true. One of the, the, the last, you know, um, colonized region in the world. So in our psyche, it, it, it is there. It's still fresh. It's like nothing happened before to others, but- Yeah, no, no, she's completely right. It's like, it seems fresh in our mindset because usually like some, uh, some African countries just got their independence in the 90s, around the 90s area. So it's, very, it's relatively like new. It's a new construct, a new uh, thought process in their mind. But in, at the same time, you can't see here and say like some other country, they didn't get colonized and they didn't come out of it and actually develop their country and become prosperity, like economic freedom and, and better living, source of living. So 
why can't we do the same? It's easy. It's very, the reform, in order to make those changes and make any kind type of reform, it's going to be very difficult. It's super difficult because there's so much corruption. But uh, Flash News, it's the history of the world. We've been capturing each other back and forth. Yep. So anyway, but the truth is, um, Singapore, richer than Great Britain today. And then Hong Kong happened. And then because Hong Kong happened, China even today happened. Because China's like, wait a minute, what, con what went on over there? And then China went on to do the exact same thing with its SEZs. Yes. Special economic zones. Some of the most free market zones in the world. And then look at it happen in communist China, who, when it comes to economics, decided that we're going to do the free market, we're going to be capitalist, because that's the only way. We tried everything else. We killed hundreds of millions of people, and, and, we, have, and we have nothing to show for it. But now that we're tired of being disrespected members of society, because guess what? That's the other thing, too. Yeah. If you want to be respected in this world, you're going to have to be among the, mo the prosperous ones for other reasons. Yeah. Well, nice, G, that we respect people just because? Absolutely. Yeah. That's really not the world we live in. So when China got tired of being disrespected, they're like, maybe we got to build also some prosperity here because then they're going to hear us. And today, China, being one of the, you know, being where it is at, even Hollywood, Hollywood, who tries to tell the world how to think, is being told by China how to movies to make. That is true. Stories. That's true. In order to be palatable for them. You see? That is true because there are instances there, like the Chinese government will say, oh, we're not going to play this movie here. This movie is not allowed in our country because it has some kind of gender against our th uh, thought process. We don't have our citizen to have this type of thought process. Now, in the Western world, we look at it and say, oh my God, this is, um, that's such a controlling thing. Oh, why would the government do that? There's no freedom there. There's nothing. And you do not understand the way of thinking here, right? They didn't get to where they are because based on the Western thought process. No, they got to where they are based on their thinking, their realization, what works for them. African African countries need to figure out what's going to work for them. It's not, instead of being influenced by the West, you got to do exactly what it will work for for your country and your people. It sucks that we don't get to do that. Or if a, if a leader comes in mind and try to do exactly like that or something like that, he gets assassinated. It's, 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 it's simple as that. He gets off, all right? That he goes off somehow, somewhere. The West will try to tell him, oh, he's just trying to take your freedom away. He's trying to do this. He's trying to do, they label him. In the, in the in the worst way possible instead because they want the resources without the resources they can't get to where they want so in other if a leader comes up and try to do that they send them off his way somewhere else and somebody else step up who would do their bidding it's it's it, it, i know i know these things the power that comes with with being prosperous yep what would you recommend concretely to countries like Senegal to get the hell out of the way, let's say, of the people who would, like you, would try to, would do everything they could to try to make it better? I mean, one of the things that happened mm. in India is India established the Indian Institute of Technology, which is a deadly yeah. engineering school, and <laughs> a huge number of its graduates went to Silicon Valley, as you well know. Yep. And many of the successful Indian graduates of IAT started to dump money back into India and build a, a capitalist infrastructure there, or help build a capitalist infrastructure there. So this sort of thing can really take hold. If you were making recommendations to governments who wanted to get mm. on board and stop being like Chad, Haiti, <laughs> Central African Republic, Congo, Congo, Sudan, Libya, Yemen, and Venezuela, et cetera, what, what concrete step, steps should they take Right. from the bottom up to get the hell out of the way. Exactly. So two things we've been doing, uh, because I'm, an, I'm a practitioner, as that's my entrepreneurial journey. I'm an entrepreneur, so I practice what I preach. Uh, but I also preach. I preach for free markets. And so when it comes to that, I'm, I'm, one of the hats that I wear is as the um, director for the African Center for Prosperity of the Atlas Network, the largest organization in the world of okay. uh, free market think tanks around the world. And so what we do there is we work on um, reforms around the world to take down barriers of entry for local entrepreneurs. So that's okay. What we do. 
But as we mm -hmm. all know, that's a great initiative to take, and we've been making some really um, good advances in uh, in, in uh, many countries, especially in Ghana. We've been making a lot of progress with our partners there, Imani. But um, piecemeal, but that is piecemeal legislation. It takes forever. It is hard as heck. And by the time hey. you made a gain here, you made twenty losses oh, no, there. Since, yeah. Continue um, the problem. So, yep. but until we get better, we got to continue at it. So that's one thing we've been doing. And so that's a, a hat I wear working with free market think tanks to try to make it easier for en local entrepreneurs to, 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 to join in the party. Uh, additionally, I'm going bold. I'm going radical. For the past <laughs> few years, uh, we've been advocating um, an idea for Africa okay. that um, found some of its roots in, um, in Latin America. And again, I'm related to the people who are involved in this. My husband being one of the key figures in this movement, a movement called the Charter Cities. Paul Romer calls it like that. He's a Nobel laureate in economics. Um, so mm. I like to call, it, call it the free cities. I like to call it the startup cities. So the best way to think about it, Jordan, and it goes back to what you were talking about earlier when you said, when you use the word operating software, most of the poor, uh, developing, most of the low-income nations, so meaning back in the days, the way we used to call it, is poor nations. Yeah. Are, they have regulations for poverty. They're basically regulated for poverty, meaning the laws, the set of law, poverty. It only calls poverty. And so what some of these fo folks have thought about, looking at the Dubai example, mm. Dubai just recently entered the top 10 of the uh, international financial centers of the world. And what Dubai did at some point is think about it and be like, on this bare, you know, sand, plot of sand that's technically worth nothing right now, as is, this 110 acres of land, sand everywhere, they're like, well, maybe Sharia law is not the best for business. Um, we got to think about better set of laws for business. We're talking about only about business, not family law, not anything else. There you go, business. just business. And they decided there's got to be something better. And so they looked around, and that's actually when to take one of the terms you used earlier, they're starting to realize, hmm, common law is actually a better way for business, specifically British common law. So at that point, and I'm oversimplifying here because otherwise we can totally geek out on it. Remember, this is like one of my latest things that I've been involved in, um, but latest has been the past 10 years, and I'm gonna share with you a win. Um, so Dubai is like, we have to, Adopt British, um, you know, common law, primarily oh. British common law. We're going to hire retired mm -hmm. British common law judges to come and educate the law here, train our own people. And that, along with many other reforms, to also become a top center uh, when it comes to the, um, and, and a free market when it comes to the finances. Dubai. Yeah, well, that British common law, that British common law system. So it's very, very interesting theologically and metaphysically. So it's predicated on the idea that people have. Every individual has all the rights that there are, except for those that are specifically regulated and limited by legal necessity. Yep. And generally, that, that realm of necessity has emerged only as a consequence of disputes between people. So you're free to do whatever you want unless you have a dispute with someone else. Then the dispute is adjudicated according, essentially, to constitutional and theological principles, and then a precedent is established and then the whole body of law built up that body of precedence. Yes. Yeah, and it's yes. bottom up, not it's, top down. It's eh? totally and English common law is a gift from yeah. God, man. Yeah. 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 Love it. Love it. Love it. So yep. common law is so much better for bottom up approaches. And we all know that markets work better in a bottom up approach. Yes. When they have to educate the law and um, resolve a dispute, they're going to be much more respectful to the contract that was passed between the two parties than, say, civil law would. Be. Yep. Yes. And yes. It's such a good. It's such a good law. It's such a good law, and it's so hard for um, Africa, the continent of Africa, obviously, uh, to figure that out or go about it that way because a lot of things. A lot of these people are attached emotion into a lot of so stuff like that. Uh, the video is almost over, and I'll, I'll touch based on it a little bit more. So anyway, so from this standpoint here, you have Dubai who is now trying to put all of this together, and eventually they put a set of laws together that would now be conducive to being a top international financial center in the world. And voila, in less than a generation, in less than 25 years, yeah. Dubai completely unrecognizable.
That is so true. That is so true. That is so true. Um, yeah, no, honestly, like I completely agree with her take. I completely agree with her uh, way of thinking. I completely agree how she want to go about it. And for any African that watching this, any African that like get to see this and stuff, needs to start adopting that kind of same type of mentality. We don't need to start blaming others anymore. All right. It's our country now, it's our continent, and you need to figure it out based on based on past experience. Learn from your mistakes and build from there. You know, um, everybody, it's a doggy dog world. Everybody's looking out for each other, but at the same time, we're not looking out for the common common interest of our countries um, around the continent. And that's crazy that we don't do that, which other people are doing, other countries are doing it. We have to figure out some way to do uh, common law practice for us, for our businesses. Because there's too many times, even I know this because there are many times I've sent money home and my, uh, some people in my family saying, oh, I want to start a business and they send money over there. They never start the business that they take the money and eat it and do something else. Oh, my family was sick this day. My family was this, this day. Um, that's why I use the money. But, you know, all in all to say that we have a long way to go, but I think we might get to that. We will get to that. We have to get to that and we have to do better. We have to start holding ourselves accountable for those kind of things. And instead of us being so downer and blaming others, we have to take accountability for ourselves. But yeah, that's going to be the end of the video, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe greatly appreciate it. i can't wait to see you guys here